Here is a full practice problem for IS, MP, and aggregate demand that you were given. Let's start with the IS curve. So part A was asking you to solve out for the IS curve. We know the IS curve is y equals 1 over 1 minus MPC times C bar plus I bar plus G bar plus NX bar minus MPC times T bar minus D times F bar minus C plus D plus X all over 1 minus MPC that whole thing times R. So we just want to plug in the numbers. And so 1 over 1 minus 0. 0.6 times 1.9 plus 1.8 plus 1 plus 1.5 minus 0. 0.6 times 2 minus 0. 0.3 times 1 minus 0.1 plus 0.3 plus 0.1 all over 1 minus 0. 0.6 times r. We've done this before, so I'm not going to do, go through the algebra again, but it ends up being y equals 11.75 minus 1.25 times r. The second part was the MP curve. Remember, our MP curve is going to be R equals R bar plus lambda times pi. And that's easy because we just plug in everything we see. We see that R bar is 3.5, and we see that lambda is 0 0.2, and pi is what we're looking at. So we have our IS curve up here. We have my MP curve up here. The new stuff that we're talking about right now is the aggregate demand curve, which you take the IS curve, y equals 11.75 minus 1.25, and what you're going to do is take this R and plug it in there. And so what do we get? Well, we're going to take this. That's going to be times 3.5 plus 0 0.2 pi. And notice now we have an aggregate demand curve, which is y as a function of pi. We're going to have to distribute this through, simplify everything. You can do that algebra out. And what we'll end up getting is you'll end up getting 7.375 minus 0 0.25 times pi. So now we have my aggregate demand curve. Last but not least in the uh, creating the curves, we do need our aggregate supply curve. I'm going to move this up just a bit. So that way we have some room to do that. And so for the aggregate supply curve, we have to remember we have pi equals expected inflation plus gamma times y minus yp, right? That's our output gap, plus any sort of price shock. And when we plug this in, we get pi equals to, well, expected inflation is 1.5 plus gamma is 1.5 as well times y minus 7. Now, a lot of people ask if you can distribute this 1.5 through, and you can, but it's best to leave it this way because it's important for us to be able to look at this output gap right here so we can see how things uh, are related to the overall level of output to notice if we're at a short run or long run. But if you were to distribute this through, you wouldn't get it wrong if I was asking just for the short run aggregate supply curve. What we're going to do is I'm just going to move this up so that way we can work with some different things. That way I can make sure we have our IS curve, our MP curve, our AD curve, and our AS curve. Let me make sure we're all comfortable with that. We have the IS curve. We have the MP curve here. We have our aggregate demand curve. And then now we have short run aggregate supply. That's what this curve is right here. Now it's time to solve this model. Notice that we have aggregate demand 
and aggregate supply. And we know that where they cross is going to get us an equilibrium point of inflation and output. So for part E, where we're trying to solve this stuff out, we want to combine aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply. That's where we always want to start. I think the easiest way to do this is to take aggregate demand, which is Y equals 7375, right? 7.375 minus 0 0.25. And then just plug this in. Well, you know, we've done this before. Plug this into here. And what do we get? We get 1.5 plus 1.5 times Y minus 7. And let's go ahead and actually do this math out this time so we're comfortable with everything. Y equals 7.375 minus 0.25 times 1.5 equals 0 0.375 minus 0 0.375 times Y minus 7. So let's do this out. Y equals, well, 7.375 minus 0.375 is just going to equal to 7 minus 0 0.375 times Y plus, and let me go ahead and plug this into my calculator to make sure, 7 times 0.375 is going to equal to 2.625. I'm going to add 0.375Y to each side to get 1.375Y equals, and I'm going to combine the 7 and the 2.675 to get 9.625. And when we divide both of these by 1.375 to get rid of it there, 1.375, just to double check, I know what this answer is, but just to double check, 9.625 divided by 1.375 into the calculator, we get seven. So our current level of output is seven. But what do we know about that? This is actually YP. So what we've done is we've found out right away that we are at the long run general equilibrium because my current level of output, which is where aggregate demand equals short and aggregate supply, is also equal to our overall potential GDP. So we're in short run and we're in long run right now, which is interesting to know. The reason why this is interesting to know is this helps us out a lot with overall calculations. I'm going to move this up. I know, right, that if I look at my short run aggregate supply curve, pi equals 1.5 plus 1.5 times y minus 7. Well, we know y is equal to 7. If y is equal to 7, then this whole thing becomes 0. So I know inflation is going to equal expected inflation, which is going to equal to 1.5. That checks out. Now, what if I want to know about my interest rate? Well, I have my MP curve from before. R equals 3.5 plus 0 0.2 times pi. Well, if I know that inflation is equal to 1.5, if I multiply that by 0 0.2, I'm going to get 0 0.3. So therefore, R is equal to 3.8. So I've solved for this general equilibrium. I've solved for this general equilibrium where output's equal to 7, interest rates are equal to 3.8, and the inflation rate's equal to 1.5. The last part of this question asks us to just go ahead and graph this. Let me move everything up. Let's keep moving this up just so that we can see what our values are. And how do we graph? Well, we're going to graph it as follows. And so over here, we'll have my MP curve. We'll have our IS curve. And we'll have our aggregate demand curve. Our MP curve is R versus pi. Aggregate demand is pi versus output. And we have output versus interest rates for the IS curve. We have our short run aggregate supply, and we have our long run aggregate supply. But the thing is, we know my long run aggregate supply is seven because we know that YP is equal to seven. So that means this is seven here. And then we know when we plug that in, 
my interest rate was 3.8. I know when I plugged that in over here, right, 3.8 for the interest rate, my inflation rate was equal to 1.5, and over here my inflation rate was equal to 1.5. So we have an initial point here that we can then work with if we have any sort of changes. That's what we're going to start to see next week when we talk about policy and we see overall shocks to the economy. Now, this is a very long question, so you're going to want to take this step by step. But if you can do a question like this, then you're going to be all set for anything else that I can throw your way.